today we're talking about a timeless classic that got infused with instant film for the modern age. Yes, I'm talking about Lomography's Diana Instant Square, a drool-inducing stone-cold stunner that turns heads so far they snap completely off. That's a bit of a dark visual. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and although my lifelong loyalty belongs to Lauren, today we're talking about my love for Diana. Which is okay, because Lauren also owns a Diana. We are Diana gang together, which, which makes it okay. Anyway, uh, in true Lomography fashion, the Diana Instant Square is unequivocally one of the most distinctive instant cameras out there. From its rare interchangeable lens system, to its beautiful vignetting and gorgeous glass optic option, our fair lady Diana is packing some unprecedented heat for the Instax Square format. This camera is unique for many reasons, but one of them is that this is the instant version of a broader series of film cameras, and that's pretty dang uncommon around these parts. The Diana actually comes in all sizes and editions, including medium format, that base model with a 35 millimeter back, the mini 35, the baby 110, uh, for a time there was even an Instax mini back in this array. The baby 110 in particular is so small, it's, it's actually ridiculous. The film canister is larger than the camera itself, absolutely bonkers and yonkers, wacky in Cincinnati, preposterous and Gloucester. Uh, that one doesn't work at all. So while the Diana is currently a camera that the company Lomography produces for these various film types, the design actually dates back to the 1960s. Originally sold by the Great Wall Plastic Company of Hong Kong, and much of its origins remain shrouded in mystery. Like, why is it called Diana at all? Who is Diana? Is she still alive today? And has she subscribed to the channel? Many variations went by other names, like Arrow, Banner, Bonnier, Windsor, Debonair, Mark L. So call it what you want, the design persevered and still looks ludicrously nice today. Um, footnote to this, someone even produced a digital version of this camera with only 1,000 copies made in 2014 and didn't call it the Diana, they called it the Rihanna. So as you can see, the umbrella under which these cameras fall is quite broad. Lomography offers a veritable bevy of colorways. Uh, we're rocking the sweet Adriano out here, but go with whatever speaks to you. Footnote, if your camera is speaking to you, like if you can hear it talking, call 1-800-YIKES, that ain't ideal. As we dig into the camera, I wanna say right off the bat, the Diana Plus 75 millimeter glass lens is entirely where it's at. If you're gonna get this camera, I 100% recommend you grab this lens for it. Shout out to In An Instant Hall of Famer, Scott Barnhart for hooking me up with it alongside uh, his Diana rig. I really, really appreciate it. And also thanks to Lomo for supplying the flash unit, which we'll get to in a bit, but back to the lens. Obviously something seismic Lomography is bringing to the game with other instant cameras is that they offer something different for the Instax format, which otherwise has little in the way of diverse hardware. With Fuji making cameras that all have the same lenses, Lomography comes at us with some special flavors. And with the base 75 millimeter lens, the 55 millimeter wide angle and the close up lens combo, the 38 millimeter super wide, the 20 millimeter fisheye and the 110 millimeter tele lens, and the glass 75 millimeter lens, you're gonna be like Benny Bags at the buffet bar at the Chico's Market. You got options. Personally, I've slapped that glass baby on there and called it a day. The sharpness is obviously dummy nice, uh, with vignetting introduced at close focus. It's a look I really ended up enjoying and it very much is its own look. I've been asked by a lot of folks, do I get the Diana? Do I get the Lomo Instant Square Glass? Do I buy a Fuji? The answer is almost completely based on whether or not you like the various looks produced by these lenses. The Lomo Square Glass provides amazing optics, clean images with great compression. Fuji cameras, while easier to use, provide a completely automatic, what you see is what you get kind of aesthetic. And the Diana is bringing you that wonderful lo-fi mix with extra creative choices. Another distinctive feature of the Diana is that she's fully manual. There is no light meter on this camera. The only reason you even need batteries for the most part is for the film ejection mechanism. There are also two shutter modes, normal and bulb. And with the normal mode, the shutter is 1 100th of a second. Whereas with bulb, the shutter will stay open until you release it. But for your practical everyday use, you'll be using the normal shutter with the aperture settings of 
F11, F19, and F32. It also has a pinhole mode you'd use with the bulb shutter. The manual choices here mean you have to rely on your intuition most of the time when snapping, or a light meter if you really wanna get precise. But I've had a fairly easy time roughly choosing which aperture to pick based on the lighting conditions. However, with that 1 100th of a second fixed shutter speed, the camera won't really be able to capture images once light dips beyond a certain point of the day. You could use bulb mode for longer shutter speeds, but you'd really wanna put that on a tripod at that point. However, there is another beautiful addition to this camera, and that is the flash unit. This sweet thing pops bright and adds a really cool flair to the available looks that you can accomplish with this camera. Flash can be kind of meh for me in general. I typically light my images pretty carefully, but the Strobe Bro certified dazzling burst this provides, plus the vignetting vibe of the photos is super sweet. And once again, this camera has grabbed me by the lapels, made me feel something I wasn't expecting deep in my throbbing heart. My heart is possibly not functioning properly. Quick tip. When using the flash, choose your aperture based on the distance you are from the subject. If you're right up close, the flash will be strongest, so use F32. But the further you get, start to open up the aperture a little bit to compensate. In terms of focusing, these lenses use zones that you have to pretty much eyeball in order to get things sharp. Um, I will say I'm prone to dislike this kind of focusing method because my capybara brain isn't so sharp that I can really tell the difference in distance between three meters, four meters, you know, what's just beyond four meters, etc. cetera, La Cienega. But I've been shooting with some basic mental tricks, like I know my arm is 0.6 meters, so I can easily determine the minimum one meter focusing distance. And, you know, if it's just beyond that, I'll go to two meters. And if I'm shooting people in frame, I'll keep cranking open. In terms of framing, the detachable large optical viewfinder is actually pretty sick because you can compose fairly easily given it is centered with the lens something that is not so easy on the other cameras. It reminds me of the impossible project I won in terms of framing and father-like. Some quick hits. You've got a selfie mirror here, uh, which works well. And I've had multiple people mention that it's kind of fun to be able to see themselves as I'm taking their picture. Uh, they actually have a good idea of what they'll look like in the frame because they see that big reflection right there. Pretty, pretty neat. Plus there is a multiple exposure mode. This allows you to take any number of pictures before the image ejects. And on that note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame this on myself, but I wish there was something stopping me from accidentally taking a picture when the camera's off. Nothing prevents the shutter from firing. It'll trigger and function whether or not the camera is on or off. If you have the lens cap off and you nudge the shutter, too bad, you just took a picture. You can eject it without double exposing by putting the lens cap on, turning the camera on, and firing it again. Um, I'm sort of haphazard with lens caps. I tend to leave them off, so I've taken a few oopsie whoopsie doopsie frames, and you also might want to get into the habit of leaving the aperture on pinhole mode, because if you fire by accident with the lens cap off, you'll still probably be able to capture another clean frame, given that pinhole mode is much like the ending of Saw 3. That's pretty dark. Okay, folks, I'm thinking we might want to fire off pros and cons. Pros, the lenses. The glass lens is one of my faves ever for instant photography, plus all the other lens options you have. There's nothing else like it. The manual control, perhaps this isn't for everyone, but I really like the experience of using the camera and employing my brain a little more than usual. And the design, you knew it was coming. It's not only not so futzo cuckoo bananas, maui wowie goo goo ga ga gorgeous, but it's also very light. Um, I typically dislike the feeling of cameras around my neck. I start slumping and straining a little bit. The posture goes a bit, but this thing's like almost weightless and completes any outfit. Cons, the maximum F11 shutter and the shutter speed of 1 100th of a second means the camera is tough to use without abundant light unless you snap the flash onto it. No shutter lock, like I said. I've duffed a bunch of frames because the shutter doesn't give a hoot whether the camera is on or off. And um, I can't think of any more cons. Honestly, this is my favorite Instax Square camera I've ever used. And I formed a bond with this camera that is Special. The base version of the Diana Instant Square is $69, nice. And the Adriano edition with five lenses and a dump truck load of little accessories is $159. For the whole bundle minus the glass lens, that's pretty wild. And if you nab the Diana, I'd love to see your shots. Tag me on Instagram at the.instantgram. 
I wanna peep those picks. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and smash a pinhole into that subscribe button. Hit up Patreon. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, and all things instant. Bye.